Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today we're going to be taking another look at that Camry N95 Intel based mini PC. And specifically, I'm going to be doing two major upgrades to it to see if it makes a difference performance wise. So I can take the guesswork out of it and you will know exactly whether or not you should do these upgrades or not. The first upgrade I'm going to be doing is replacing the NVMe drive. The one we tested before and the, that came with the system, the NETAC, barely scratched the surface of SATA 3 speeds. It was pretty pathetic. We're going to be using the P3 Plus Crucial NVMe drive, 500 gigabytes in size and it's up to 5,000 megabits read for this drive. It's pretty fast so, you know, we'll see if it can stretch its legs. And to make it easier, we're going to use this NVMe to USB adapter to clone the drive using Macro and Reflect. See how it, you can put your NVMe in there and it accommodates multiple different sizes and it has just a slide aluminum case. And to go with that upgrade, we're going to drop in 16 gig of DDR4 3200 megahertz, replacing the 8 gig 2,666 megahertz stick of RAM that it came with. It only has one slot to accommodate memory on this unit. So keep that in mind. You're limited to 16 gig total. So maxing out the RAM and upgrading the hard drive to this super fast NVMe, we're gonna do some benchmarks and find out if we got some speed improvements and in real world tests, does it make a difference? And should you invest the money in doing this? Wait till the end and find out when we show you the graphs, the charts, maybe play some games and see if it's increased performance or not. And what my final recommendations are. And without further ado, let's get this started. Come on, let's go. Well, here is the uh, enclosure with the drive. We'll just set this, that we cloned, we'll set this right here for a second. So, if you take the back off of the cam Camry PC, that's where my SSD is in, that we have to pull off these four little cushion, feet cushions. And why is that? Well, because this is how you get to the screws to take off the top of this to expose the internals to swap out the NVMe drive. Once you have all three, all four screws removed, Carefully remove the top of your unit here because there is a power cable connected. And then you will see the cheap knee tack. Just take that screw holding it in out. Take a crucial P3 Plus, put it in place. Secure it gently and reattach it with the M.2 screw. All right. There's two screws right there, one, and then there's one there. Once you pop the top, you're able to access the underside of the board where the RAM is located. And there you are. Currently it's only a 266 megahertz, 8 gig DDR4 stick, and there's only one slot for upgrades, which means no dual channel for you. But we're going to throw in a 16 gig 3200 megahertz memory stick to upgrade our performance. And we're gonna do some tests, so let's slap in the stick and go from there. Got this silicone power 16 gig DDR4 3200 CL22 from Amazon for $23. I put the link in the description below in case you're interested in picking it up to upgrade your N95 Camroy mini PC. 
So we got that and we're gonna slap it in. Just put this in. And good to go. We'll boot the system back up now. Plugging it in, readjust the camera, and turn it on and see if it works. Fingers crossed. So we are in the BIOS. Let's go check out a few things. Um, the memory is set to 3200, which is great because that's one of the things I needed to do. And let's see what we can see for the boot. Let's just log in and find out if everything works. Looks like it worked fine. Let's make sure that uh, the system actually has 16 gig of rem memory. Let's make sure that it actually showed up. This drive, as you can see, here is the new Crucial drive here. So about 16 gig of RAM, great. Going to benchmark this system drive on Crystal Dismark with the new Crucial drive in here. Let's let it go and do all the tests and we'll be back in a minute. Crystal Dismark test is in, as you can see it's about a little over three times the speed of the generic NVMe M2 drive that was shipped with it, that it came with. So what does this mean? This current crucial disk is capable of 5,000 megabits per second read, and it's only getting 1749. That means that the system uh, M2 NVMe drive slot isn't capable of anything really faster than maybe 2000. I would say that you're better off getting a drive at the slower speeds of 2200 or 2500 to save yourself some money because you won't realize any faster speeds than what you have than this. So that being said, let's carry on and continue on to the next benchmark. We're going to run the passmark all tests and we will be right back when it's done and compare with our initial test of the system when I did the first review of this N95 mini PC. As you can see, passmark testing has finished brought up a side-by-side -side comparison of the two system tests. The one on the left is the original with how the system was shipped stock. If we get a quick comparison, the original test was 979 pass mark and we had 14,021 for the new test. The test on the right is the one with 16 gig of RAM. So we upgraded the RAM, we doubled it tweaked a little bit of the system overhead for the CPU and the BIOS for the second test. Um, and this has the Crucial NVMe, the faster drive and this right test. We see the CPU mark went from 4148 to 5445, which is a great improvement. The 2D graphics only went up by four points. The 3D graphics mark for instance, went up 40 points, which is a little bit of a jump. Memory mark here went from went from 1700 on the left to 2192 on the right. So that definitely was a good jump in speed because this was originally clocked at 2,666 megahertz versus 3,200 megahertz. But the real thing is the disk mark 1908 on the original NeTag drive, which kind of sucks. And this new crucial drive benchmarked in at 13,974. That's nice. We're going to test R23 again and compare that result too. And when we're done with synthetic benchmarks, we'll go through and test the same games that we did before. 
and see if we got FPS improvement. And if we did, we'll know that our changes made a difference and you can save the time by doing those changes ahead of time or not, or keeping the system as it is. Come on, let's go. Well, this is an interesting result. The Cinebench test finished at 1973. Previous test was 2502. What that tells me is that I'm pretty sure that thermal throttling occurred on the CPUs. It's the only other explanation because basically upgraded the RAM and the SSD, the NVMe, since I tried to tweak the um, frequency above, you know, what it was like anemically set at, it probably thermal throttled itself through half this test, thereby destroying the results. Let's go and test some games then. Capped at 72 FPS because it just gave me a better, smoother playback. And let's launch it and play and see what we get. Maybe we'll improve, maybe we won't. All right, so we're running a little hot in the CPU. And we are not doing great in the FPS realm for some reason. You would think it would be doing better It is not. I guess we'll just wait until the system dump shows us what's what. play a little bit better but why is it worse all right 10 8 1280 by 768 let's uh and yes we're doing better on the frame rates as expected but And then where the and then there was one less buzzard. Well, let me pull up the uh, final results in the dump and let's see what it really looks like. All right, I've got the benchmarks here. It just looks abysmal. I don't understand it. If we zoom in here, this right here is the last test at 1080p, right? It did worse than the original test that I did before I upgraded this slightly. Here is the new uh, 1280 by 768 test. So that's completely playable, but the 1080p test took a nosedive, why? Thermal throttling is my only guess because the system's running hot since I tweaked the setting for the CPU to achieve higher boost rates. Skyrim on the N95 machine. Hmm. 31 frames per second. I'm going to capture right now. 
The frost trolls came up on me before I could start. So. Kill them. Kill them all. Playing good, but you know, we're at a low resolution. So. All right, now we're in some different terrain. Yeah, we're holding at 20 something and 30 FPS, not bad. Why has he run away? The things you find lying around, right? It's a mammoth. Oh, it's a giant, that's why. Gathering some soul gems. It's like, what am I gonna do with this giant warhammer? Nothing. Can't even like lift it. It's so stupid. So thus concludes my upgrade of the Camry N95 Mini Intel PC. Is it worth upgrading it? I would only upgrade the NVMe drive to nothing faster than maybe a 2500 uh, megabits per second drive. Go for the max capacity that you can get and you should be fine with it. Anything over than that, the interface on the system, just it won't handle it. It doesn't have the throughput to recognize and realize those speeds. As far as the memory, well, it's at 16 gig. It gives it some more breathing room overhead and that'll help in um, everyday tasks, online, web, playing a few of your favorite games. You might squeeze out a another frame per second or something like that, but I've noticed one thing to note that in my attempts to increase the uh, turbo boost headway for the CPU, it's been thermal throttling itself due to the crappy cooling on it. it lowers the performance rather than keeping at like 2.76 gigahertz. And if it goes up higher than that, it just can't compensate for the extra speed and the heat that it puts out, even at 10 watts draw for power. So don't mess with those settings or get a new solution from like B-Link or something that has a little bit better cooling solution, made of copper, heat fins, etc. The one that's on there can barely keep up. That's what is killing the system. That, and it wasn't meant for gaming. So, was it worth it overall? Yeah, just do that. Get a stick of uh, 3200 uh, megahertz DDR4, and that's it. Don't go above and beyond. So. That's my thoughts, that's what happened to me, and I hope this testing has helped you in deciding whether or not you wanna upgrade the system further or buy a regular desktop system. Decide what it's going to be used for and stick with it. Don't keep dumping money into it. Thanks for coming along with me today and watching me go through this testing and upgrade process, and hopefully I've saved you some headaches. Thanks for watching Remember This Tech.